Oh my god, I discovered space Pomeranians. This is my greatest achievement ever. Hey everybody, you want to play a game that's actually, literally, too large to explore in your lifetime? Congratulations, we have No Man's Sky. I'm actually very happy that I did not play No Man's Sky when it first came out. It looked very impressive what they were able to do with the size and scale of the game. I mean, it's a procedurally generated universe. A universe. Bull. But now that the next expansion and the Abyss expansion have both come out, there's apparently a lot more to do in the game, and that is when I am finally getting my hands on it. And so with fresh eyes, we go into the new, improved experience of No Man's Sky. Yeah, it's alright, I guess. When I say that you have a procedurally generated universe, a lot of people have thoughts that probably spring into their mind, like exploring distant planets and, you know, amazing space combat and trading organizations and building bases and encounters with deadly life forms. And you know what? The thing about it is, No Man's Sky actually does have all of that in the very long spaces between doing the kind of stuff that you'd probably end up doing for the majority of your time exploring the universe flying from one planet to another, or hyperspacing from one system to another, mining a bunch of resources, scanning said life forms so that you can collect data on them for reasons, and then naming those things, whatever you would care to name them, and um, walking around a lot, yeah, there's a lot of walking in No Man's Sky. Um, you you walk all over the place. Can't really scan stuff from your ship or mine stuff from your ship. So I guess you, you kind of have to walk. You're going to do a lot of walking. It's a great walking simulator in space. Okay, I there, I said it. It's a walking simulator in space and occasionally you get to do stuff. And the thing is, it has its moments. It has some really good moments, it just doesn't have enough of them. Like you keep playing the game thinking to yourself, Wow, there's so much to do. But then you start to realize that you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again in kind of a monotonous and tedious way with no other payoff or reward to talk about. Yeah, there are quests now, you know, you get to go on missions for people, and a lot of it is randomly generated, but then there are some actual quest lines. However, those quest lines are uh, alright, I guess. They're, they're fine. But the bigger quests that you're going to go on are pretty much, how can I fit everything into my exosuit carrying capacity, because it will only stack to 250, for most things, and then some technological modules will only stack to 10, so that's gonna eat up inventory space pretty quickly. And you know, usually your ship will carry twice that much in a stack, but you know, your ship doesn't do much at the beginning. So uh, here's a pro tip, uh, yeah, I'm gonna actually do one of those on this uh, episode. Find a distress call on one of your planets, and you may just get lucky and find yourself uh, hovering over an abandoned, and probably pretty broken in my case, hauler, the big ship, that you can actually just use as your main ship, uh, and then just get it airborne, and then just trade it in for a, an actual fully functional <laughs> ship at one of the space stations. You'll pay like no money for it, and it's gonna be cooler, and you don't have to repair anything, because repairing stuff on broken spaceships are costly, costly, costly in-game. But hey, then I got a slightly smaller, but much more complete ship in the process that ended up serving me really well for the rest of my time with the game. To say that you completed No Man's Sky is not a possibility. It, it just simply is not. With, I think they've said a trillion planets that you can actually generate in the game, it's just not happening. You're, you're not going to do it. So everyone's playthrough of No Man's Sky is basically going to be until you get bored. 
And for me, you know, I stuck with it with for quite a while. Uh, longer than a lot of games. And uh, I found certain things to be more enjoyable than others. Like, for instance, uh, learning alien languages. That's pretty cool. You get to learn individual words from people at space stations or from uh, little knowledge tubules that are around. That's pretty fun. Uh, you know, building a, a base all of your own is kind of neat. Uh, and, you know, finding better equipment, uh, getting upgrades and stuff like that. Uh, the feeling of just landing on a new planet for the first time uh, and just seeing that transition as you go from space to an atmosphere, uh, those are always fun. Those are always fun. But then, at a certain point, you get a different sensation. You land on a planet and automatically think, Oh no, I have to scan a bunch more things, and oh, I gotta get more resources from this planet so that I can build the next big thing, and oh boy, I'm gonna have to refine those down, so I gotta get a, a refinery thing here and put that down, and oh no, now I gotta transfer everything over to my ship, and I'm too far away from my ship, so I gotta do something about that. And you start to realize that this is now just busy work. It's a chore. And yes, I understand that, you know, the expansions that they've done to it have enlivened it to a great degree, but I just have to ask myself a big question now. And it's a question that this game actually prompted me to ask, which is, how big is too big? You know, for a while, we have been looking at new and improved open-world games, RPGs, action-adventure titles, that just get larger than the last one. They have to. Fallout 76 is four times the size of Fallout 4. When does it become too large? Because I really feel like No Man's Sky is too large. Like, if they had just taken this very, you know, interesting idea but they had tried to generate a smaller landscape where, you know, you'd have players interact with each other more often. They weren't so spread out. And maybe if the players weren't uh, on these incredibly large planets, maybe the planets were a bit smaller, things would be a little closer together, more tight-knit. Uh, your objectives wouldn't be, like, halfway on the other hemisphere. They'd just be, like, you know, in walking distance, and it would be easier and quicker to actually get to them. I feel like the game would have improved tremendously. Maybe you don't need a trillion planets. Maybe you only need a million planets. You know, if there were only a million planets in the game, I would probably come across some other players on other planets, or even in other systems. In the entire time I played, I didn't come across anybody else in any part of any system. I don't even know if there were other people around. Maybe they got just as lost as me. Maybe they want to join me, but I don't even know how to communicate with them. So, it's kind of a lost cause. Yeah, No Man's Sky is the kind of game that makes you wonder if this whole notion of bigger is better really applies anymore to video games. Uh, because I'm really starting to feel like the content of the quality should be far more important than the scale and the size of it. And that's the big issue that I had with No Man's Sky, is that it's really, really large. It's made that abundantly clear right up at the front. But there's not a whole lot of stuff inside of that to do. And even when they do show you, hey, look, there's plenty of stuff to do. It's just kind of like the same stuff over and over again. Yeah, there's tons of different planets, and this is a cold planet, and this is a hot planet, and this is a poisonous planet. It's just a different environmental hazard than the last planet, and it pretty much functions in exactly the same way. Ooh, here are dangerous monsters, and you deal with them the same way as other dangerous monsters. Ooh, here is something that looks identical to something you scanned on another planet, but you gotta scan it again because it's probably a new variation, even though you can't even tell. This is the same thing over and over again, and that's really not engaging as far as gameplay goes. And Last time I checked, you know, gameplay's kind of important to, to games. 
you should be considering that. So although they've done a really nice job with maintaining this game over a year after its initial release, seeing problems, trying to address them, adding on to content for free with big downloadable patches, which is terrific. I commend Hello Games for doing that. I still don't really know if the overall concept works for me. And, and that's a shame, because I would have really liked this game. But I think I'd actually have liked it if it were smaller. And maybe that is something that I'm going to be looking at in the future. That maybe I don't care as much as I used to, that a game is so much larger than the last one. Because it's not so much how big it is. It's what is in that bigness that matters. And, man, in Void of Space... Yeah, there's, there's not much there. <sighs> Alright, well, back to mining. Wish me luck. <sighs> Collect my carbon. Oop, got a little heated there. Okay, back in the action. Oh. Can't miss this guy. Yep. Going great. 